In this presentation, we will discuss the audit process related to prepaid expenses. We'll start off with discussing what prepaid expenses are. Prepaid expenses are a type of other assets, which leads to the question, of course, of what are other assets? First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Other assets are assets that provide economic benefit under a year. When we consider prepaid expenses, what we're thinking about are those types of things where typically we have made a payment before we have received the benefit. The most common type of prepaid expense that we learned in financial accounting and would be audited for within audit is prepaid insurance. So insurance is the classic example because of course, whenever we pay for insurance, the definition of insurance means that we're buying the insurance for something that's going to be insured in the future. Therefore, we haven't received anything at the point in time that we paid for the insurance. We're going to be receiving the benefit, the coverage, the coverage against risk in the future. And typically when we're talking about large companies, they'll be buying insurance that might be at least a year into the future. Why? Because it's typically cheaper in order to do that rather than paint on a month to month type basis. We need to consider in that case, the prepaid insurance but of course we can't have prepaid types of any types of items where we pay for the item before we actually receive the item a little bit unusual remember because typically you would think that we would pay for the item at the point in time we receive it whether it be goods or services or possibly after in this case we're paying before we receive the goods or services typically being prepaid insurance but we could prepay things like rent rents another item that we could have circumstances in which prepaying the rent would be a smart thing to do if that was the case then we would treat the prepayment and the audit of it in a similar fashion as we would for prepaid insurance we could have prepaid interest as well and similar kind of fashion there anything that we of course decide that we're going to pay before we get the goods or services typically we try not to do that because most of the time the company will want to pay after because it's the time value of money if at all possible, delay the payment as much as possible. The place where we cannot do that typically is prepaid insurance. And there might be negotiation or, or agreement type formats which would lead us to want to be in a situation where we would prepay the rent or some other type of expense. And so the inherent risk related to prepaid expense, recalling that inherent risk is the risk that's just basically inherent to the process we're looking at. So if we were to remove the internal controls, what would the inherent risk? Recall that inherent risk, we want to consider inherent risk. We want to consider control risk. 
The two things that we as the auditor don't really have control over, those are controlled by the company, inherent risk by the choice of business they are in, control risk by the controls they put in to deal with that inherent risk. We then set detection risk, which is going to be the level of uh, audit or substantive testing we will think about. So we want to think about inherent risk, control risk, set detection risk. So generally determined to be low, the inherent risk, uh, the accounts do not generally involve complex uh, continuous accounting issues. So because prepaid insurance is pretty straightforward given the other types of things that can go on, we do have to consider the calculation of prepaid insurance, but oftentimes it's going to be something that may not be the most material of factors in terms of dollar amounts. And it's not that complex to really figure out the prepaid insurance. We get the policy and we can figure out how much has expired and how much has not expired. It's not not too difficult other than knowing the components that will be involved that typically be in the insurance policy and then the payments considering those two items to figure out the amount that has expired and that has not expired the control risk so now we could consider the control risk the controls that the organization has to put in place once we consider control risk and inherent risk we could set detection risk to see the level of testing we want to do procedures related to the purchasing process should ensure that each item is properly authorized and recorded because prepaid insurance are usually processed through the purchasing process. So when we consider, in other words, prepaid expenses, we are going through a purchase process within the prepayment process. And therefore, when we audit the prepayment cycle, we should be auditing the prepaid expenses as well, the same kind of controls that are going to be in place. So this is another area, of course, as we construct the audit process, there will be overlap when we consider these different types of accounts. We need to consider where that overlap will be so that we could do the, the enough testing that we need, but a minimal amount of testing in order to make the audit process efficient. Then we have the substantive procedures. We're going to say related to prepaid insurance in this case. So we have the substantive procedures. We have the inherent risk, the detection risk. Then uh, we have the inherent risk and the control risk. Then study the detection risk. Then considering the substantive procedures, the actual testing items that we would be doing within the audit. Test of details of prepaid insurance accounts. Step one is to get a schedule of the prepaid assurance account. So obviously we're going to need a schedule. We're going to not want to know when the payments were going to be made. We're probably also going to need the policy. So those are the two things we're typically going to need. If we if we get the GL account or the trial balance, if we get the trial balance, we're going to look at prepaid. We're going to say we need the GL account now. Most of the time, the company will be posting their payments to the GL account of prepaid insurance. And then they should be, if they're a publicly traded company, doing the month end reconciliation and then we should just have to basically uh, review that so if you have questions about that you want to go to financial accounting think about the year end adjusting entry if you're talking about publicly traded companies they should have completed the adjusting entry which means they would be posting their items uh, when they make the payment to insurance to prepaid expenses an asset not a liability then at the end of a time period typically a month they would make the adjustment to adjust the amount that has expired and the amount that has not been expired, the amount that remains in prepaid expense, the amount that is not. Now, if you're auditing a very small company or doing a re review or a compilation or something like that, quite possible that they didn't do the, the period end adjustment. And you may actually have to, to look at that period end adjustment, which is basically just an adjusting entry. Or it could be possible that instead of posting the transactions to prepaid insurance, they're posting it to a prepaid to insurance expense. And in that case, of course, you would just basically do the reverse of the adjusting entry. Instead of adjusting it out of prepaid insurance, you would be saying, okay, now prepaid expenses overstated. You'd have to reduce that. Again, publicly traded company, that adjusting entry you would think had been taken place. And we just need to basically test to see if it was done properly. Assertions related to prepaid insurance includes valuation. Calculate portion of the policy that is not expired and portion that is. So with regard to valuation, we're going to get the policy. We're going to say, okay, how much time period does this policy cover? And, and then we're going to consider how much of the policy has expired and how much of the policy has not been expired. So the assumption here, we have the policy. Policy has been paid for. We could see that the policy has been paid for. Then we consider the policy that has been paid for. 
how much of it has expired, how much is have, of it has not expired. The amount that has not expired then should be still reported as prepaid insurance. The amount that has expired should be expense. Rights and obligations, confirm policy beneficiary. So we want to make sure that we know who the beneficiary is of the policy. Inquire the insurance broker. So it's useful to be able to talk to the insurance broker because the insurance broker is outside of the organization. So it gives us a little bit more confirmation or assurance, a little bit better ed evidence that we can compile to give us assurance about prepaid insurance. Existence and completeness. So with the assertion of existence and completeness, confirm policy with the insurance broker. So again, we could talk to the insurance broker about that outside of the company, bit more assurance. Examine supporting uh, source documents. So we can consider the source documents as well. And then we have classification. So classification assertion, determine the correctness of classifications to accounts. We want to make sure that the accounts are being properly classified or uh, the amounts are being properly classified to the proper classes.